Steam continues its censorship policies on anime games. You might think that they're only aiming for them indie lolis and high school games, but no. This time they're going to extend their policies on visual novels with freaking college anime girls too, as in 100% legal girls. What the hell is going on, Steam? This and more news on screen capped. But before we get to the news, I want to say huge thanks to everyone for liking or sharing my videos, subscribing or following me on social media, and supporting me on Patreon, PayPal, and many other means, links down below. We have pretty much established many times that Steam has a rather inconsistent policy on what type of games they're allowed in their platforms. Back in 2018, they told people that they're going to pretty much allow anything on Steam as long as it's not illegal. But then they start banning games that are not actually illegal because it might cause unknown risk or something along those lines. I've already talked about that in another video. I'm getting rather sick of Steam banning games. The last time I reported this on my channel, Steam continues to ban even more games. The most recent one that got the ban hammer was a game simply titled My Girlfriend. This looks just like your typical visual novel with anime girls, except this time the visual novel takes place in college setting instead of the legally gray high school setting as usual, which means that the girls are pretty much 100% legal. So how can this game, which has 100% legal girls in there, still get banned on Steam? Honestly, I have no idea, but let's get into the story here for more details. So the game was supposed to be released on February, but Steam delayed it for an extended review. And finally, they put on the ban hammer on March 13, 2019. It remains a mystery to me and so many people on the internet why this game and so many other games are banned on Steam, and why so many games are not banned on Steam. To further highlight Steam's rather ridiculous double standards, let's talk about Steam's other games that are released in the market, which features new if you're on Steam, you can just quickly search on Steam nudity and you'll find many games, including visual novels, that feature quite a lot of nudity. Nekopara is a great example for this, as this game has an 18 plus patch that you can pretty much download and enjoy. So why is Nekopara allowed, but not any of these games, which feature content that are pretty much the same. And then we get into games that are even more niche in nature. There's a game called Dirty Education, which is a gay furry visual novel that apparently features hardcore uncensored sex. You can still buy this game on Steam, just fine. Not only that, but there are also yaoi games with sexual content that you can also buy on Steam just fine. One game in particular warns the user that the game contains explicit sex between underage characters that are above the age of consent. So again, why are these games allowed and not these other games? I'm just utterly baffled by Steam's ridiculous double standards policy and their inability to be consistent. They allow this on one side and then then they don't allow the other. Then they allow this. Then they allow that. Then they don't allow that. Then they don't allow this. They still have a bunch of waifu games on Steam, but they ban these games specifically and let these other games to be in there because... I have no idea. Trying to figure out the reason behind all of the bannings and not the bannings of many other games in the market would really make anyone's head explode. Maybe they try to ban these games because the characters look young and somehow that criticism doesn't extend to Nekopara or any of these other games that are not banned. They only look young in these specific games, but not these other games that are still out there on Steam. Oh no, these games are somehow just fine. It's really strange because the site once got an email from Steam saying something along the lines of, we're not letting games that dodge the 18 plus age mark if the characters look young. Not only that these characters in these other games look young, but they didn't even use the 18 plus defense. So again, why? This game doesn't even take place in high school and it's still banned. I really feel bad for the developers of this game. His last game, My Senpai, takes place in high school and has to be rewritten and delayed. So he ends up telling people that he doesn't want to make any school or college games just to make sure that it's not banned on Steam. I'm telling you guys this story again, just to highlight the point that this amount of ridiculous censorship prevents people from telling great stories that takes place in high school or college or any other settings that are 
banned according to Steam's ridiculous standards. It doesn't even have to be great to be honest, you just need to give people the opportunity to tell these stories. But if you ban these stories because they take place in certain settings, then you can't have great stories. Many people have recommended others who love anime games to go to other websites that would definitely host uncensored games like DL site or Lutaku. Steam is trying to push its audiences to go into those websites for anime games rather than its own so that they can have their yaoi furry gay porns instead. Now I'm not saying that yaoi furry gay porn should be banned as well, I'm saying that if that's perfectly fine, then why not the waifu ones? Is there a specific mindset that makes people to think that women in fiction, regardless of age, should be protected at all costs from those evil men on the internet who would like to fap to them? Is there a specific mindset that makes people to think that sexualization of men are pretty much just fine and we can just fap to them all day long? What kind of horrendous, hypocritical, and asinine mindset that would make people to think this way? I don't know guys, you tell me. And speaking of Steam, what's going on with Steam's competitors these days? We've talked about Epic Game Store for a while now and how the store is just utterly lackluster. While I bought Metro Exodus there, which is still a great game, the launcher itself and the store itself is freaking terrible. But the store gains more and more controversies as time went on. Another one that got into the Epic Game Store exclusivity was a game called Phoenix Point, which was made by the creators of the original XCOM series. The game was crowdfunded on Fig, and it has reached its goal of $500,000, even going above and beyond to $765,000 at the time of writing. However, the game gains quite a lot of controversy because it's going to be an Epic Games Store exclusive. Here's an article from Eurogamer stating that the game will be an Epic Games Store exclusive for about a year before its release in other platforms. Those who back the game and want the game to be released on either GOG or Steam will get the keys for those games on those respective platforms. If you don't want it though, you can also ask for a refund. We've covered the topic of Epic Games Store and why people don't like it in other videos. The gist of it is this, Epic Games Store are lacking so many basic features that Steam has. It's definitely beneficial for the developers to be in the platform thanks to its higher shares, but the users are unfortunately unable to reap a lot of the benefits. I for example find it incredibly difficult to pay for the games that I want. I have to go to a mini market to pay for these games instead of just staying at home and using my phone to send the money. It's really inconvenient and there's no regional pricing which will hamper a lot of the people who are outside of the US. To be fair to Epic, they will be adding more and more features as time went on. Features that, in my opinion, should have been added at the very beginning of the store, but baby steps, I guess. But then there's also this piece of news. Epic Game Store is apparently data mining Steam users' metadata. According to a forum post on Meta Council by a user named Matt Jokey, Epic Games Launcher on Startup searches for Steam install and proceeds to get lists of files in your Steam cloud, which includes mostly game saves for every user that has logged in to the PC. It will also create an encrypted file called localconfig.vdf containing the data of your Steam friends. You can replicate these findings using a software called Microsoft Process Explorer. To put it short, it will read your localconfig.vdf to grab the data of your Steam account ID alongside your friend's Steam ID as well. That sounds incredibly messed up. Why would Epic Games need the data of your Steam friends or Steam's data in general? Well, Epic Games Vice President of Engineering Daniel Vogel attempted to clear up what's happening by responding to one of the threads over the Phoenix Point subreddit, as in the same Phoenix Point that recently got an Epic Games Store exclusive. According to him, the launcher sends a hardware survey such as your CPU, GPU, etc. at a regular interval. Um, how regular? People usually don't change their hardware specs every second unless if you're a tech YouTuber. So remember that encrypted local config.vdf file? That file is only sent to Epic Game Store if and only if the user gave permission to Epic Game Store to import their Steam friends. And even then, they're only sending hash IDs. But here's the question, Epic Games. Why would you do that even when the users don't ask you to import Steam friends? Or here's a much better question. Why are you also tracking the play history? Are you doing this just to see the next kind of game so you can hold hostage on your platform, Epic Games? To say that people are unhappy about this, 
is an understatement. I should also like to mention to all of you that Tencent, as in that giant Chinese corporation, is holding about 40% of stakes on Epic Games. Tim Sweeney on Epic Games Store commented something along the lines of, Tencent has no involvement on the data being sent. The question right now is, do you believe what he said? Because I certainly don't. From what I know, this only happens if you run the Epic Games launcher at all. So I don't recommend having this application to run when Windows start. But if you're using something like Unreal Engine 4 for your projects or something, well, you're SOL, my friend. Another good recommendation is to just straight up delete your Epic Game Store account so that the Chinese government don't get access to any of your personal info, hopefully. And if you don't have any Epic Game Store account, congratulations. As long as you're not playing multiplayer games, the single player games are pretty much already cracked. So it's up to you, viewers. So remember the last episode when I talk about how the Indian police officers are going to arrest people for playing PUBG Mobile because it's causing kids to become addictive or even violent? Remember how there are investigation and research being done towards these games and how the investigators and researchers are pretty much free to play these games however they want? Ladies and gentlemen, it's unfortunate for me to report to you that there have been arrests made on these ridiculous charges. It's also fortunate for me to report to you that the suspects have been released release on bail. That's right, the PUBG mobile ban on India continues. 10 people were arrested in Gujarat for playing PUBG. The only acceptable reason for someone to be arrested when playing PUBG is if they're having sex with children at the same time. So who are the people who got arrested by these ridiculous charges? Freaking college students, that's right. They're not even targeting children as they seem to suggest. They also target adults, as in people who don't really need any parenting whatsoever, as in people who can make decisions for themselves. The most hilarious part from this mind-boggling stupidity is that the students were released on bail later the same day. Can't imagine why you only have to pay two to three bucks to get yourself out. Like what's even the point of these arrest officers? Are you not confident enough with your education system that you have to ban video games to make students to pay attention to their studies? And by the way, that's exactly the reason why they ban these games, is because it distracts students from their studies. Come to think of it, the way these police officers arrest these students make them to be a bunch of bullies asking for lunch money. There's also this hilarious statement from the minister in Goa describing PUBG as a demon in every house. I feel really bad for the people in India. They're pretty much still occupied by ultra-religious conservatives, but it's really not that much of an issue in the Western countries. The Western countries have other moral guardians to take care of in there that likes to ban games that are problematic content with women and anime games in general. Huh. I just realized that the first and last story involved college students and people not recognizing how adult they are. And these people are banning games.